We are happy to report now something that we haven't said for about two weeks. Gas prices did not set another record today. In fact, they are down roughly one cent nationwide to an average of $5 a gallon. That's the good news and the only good news when it comes to the economy today. The bad news is that gas prices are still over $5 in 21 states plus Washington, D.C. The markets closed down again today. The Dow below 30,000. The Nasdaq at levels not seen since 2020. I could go on with the bad news, but let's talk just about gas prices for a second. In a way, President Biden can claim victory. He says that prices would be much higher if not for all of his policies. But the White House has a tough time figuring out now what's more important, lowering gas prices or moving America to clean energy. Take a listen. First of all, we, it's, you can do both at the same time. What we're trying to deal for, uh, what we're trying to uh, deal with right now is how do we lower cost for American families? And one of the things that we are seeing currently right now with oil refineries is they are using this moment that there is a war in Ukraine to, to actually make a profit when they, there are steps that they can take so that we can actually lower, lower gases, low gas prices for families. If, we had, if the president had not taken the actions that he's taken in the past several months, it would not, it, the prices that we see now would be a lot worse. It's so she says, without President Biden's actions, prices would be a lot worse. That's debatable. Let's assume for the moment that she's true, or at least partly right. She's likely referring to President Biden's release of oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. But that has come with its own problems. In fact, the Strategic Reserve was turned into the political reserve, and now we and President Biden have neither. Just 43% of Americans approve of President Biden's handling of his job so far. 29% approve of the work he's done on the economy. Just 23% on his policies on inflation. And the Strategic Petroleum Reserve is now at its lowest level since 1984. And we use a lot more oil and gas than we did in 1984. Remember the words, the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. It comes out of the oil crisis in the 1970s. Hundreds of millions of barrels of oil stored underground along the Gulf of Mexico. The idea is to give the president strategic options and prevent anyone from blackmailing us with oil supply. Those strategic options now are severely limited as the Petroleum Reserve is severely depleted. Congressman Pat Fallon wants to change that. He's introduced a bill to limit when a president can take oil out of the reserve. Uh, look, we're at a big, very different place than we were in the 1980s. Do we still even need a strategic petroleum reserve? Well, you know, Leland, obviously with the uh, technological advances with fracking and other things that it, it's really put the United States and the energy industry here uh, domestically in a much better position than we were in the 1970s and 80s. But yeah, I think it's a very good idea to have a strategic oil reserve because you just don't know if there is a, an, it's intended for if there's a natural disaster or there's some national security emergency. It's not supposed to be used for political expediency, which is exactly what Joe Biden did. Uh, under, under President Trump, the strategic oil reserve, I believe, uh, grew by 30 million barrels. And unfortunately, Joe Biden has a plan to to tap it for 180 million barrels, which will leave it, as you just mentioned, uh, to about 538 million barrels, which is the lowest we've seen since the mid-80s. And uh, that's not something that is good policy. And it was a drop in the bucket. It didn't have any impact whatsoever on oil uh, and the gas prices. Yeah, we've all learned that because we've seen the chart go <laughs> up uh, for, the past, for the past year or so, uh, long, longer than that. It's about a, about a 30 to 40 day supply of oil uh, there that's in case of in cases you said of an, a national emergency bigger picture though we're really talking about sort of this this larger issue of price increases all of which sort of flow down uh from the rise in the cost of oil president biden today said that he thought a recession was not inevitable do you agree with him well unfortunately i think it's going to happen i mean for the first quarter our GDP went down 1.4%. Now, the, I'm sure his spokesperson in the administration would say, well, that's just global. It's because of the war in Ukraine. It's because of COVID. Yeah, well, then why did China's GDP rise 4.6%? So clearly, it's something that uh, isn't affecting the entire globe. And we should uh, look at this because it's his policies. When you, you, when you have a overt de declaration of war on the American energy industry, things are going to happen. The first, on day one, he fi signed an executive order saying that the, the pipes, uh, I'm sorry, the Keystone XL pipeline would uh, not go forward. 
And then in his first week, he said there's going to be no more permits issued for exploration for natural gas and oil on federal lands and waters. That is not an indication that you're going to unleash the American energy sector no, to you know, provide restricts, what we need domestically. Yeah, no, sure. it restricts the energy sector, which he sort of said he was going to do. And now all of a sudden you have him uh, and, and his energy secretary uh, a, a little bit in a, in a word pretzel. Here's uh, Secretary Granholm today on CNN. Today, we need that supply increased. Of course, in five or 10 years, actually in, in the immediate. These companies are saying, you know, you're asking me to do more now, invest more now, when in fact, five or 10 years from now, we don't think that demand will be there, and the administration doesn't even necessarily want it to be there. We really want to see us move to clean energy, but we also need to see this increase right now. They have a huge deep pockets. They have a big ability to invest in the future, as well as investing right now so that we don't see oil and gas causing the inflation numbers and people being hurt every day. I, I, I'm a little confused, um, and I follow this stuff pretty carefully. I'm wondering what the Texas oil executives that you represent are saying behind the scenes when they hear these demands from the administration, threats of investigations, uh, if they don't produce more, and at the same time, this promise to effectively put them out of business. Uh, that was a word pretzel, and I have to remember that phrase. It was nonsensical. It was like I was watching uh, the movie Billy Madison. It didn't make any sense at all. Oh, the oil, oh, you know, I, I give Billy Madison way more credit. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, these are private industries, and they are operating for a profit and to uh, give a, a, a return to their investors and their shareholders. So if she wants a centrally planned economy, that's something like that's what she's essentially alluding to. And you know, they have a responsibility to their customers and their shareholders and to actually turn a profit. And we should be if you want to be an environmentalist, uh, Leland, the best way to protect the environment is to have the American energy industry exploring and, uh, uh, and drilling for natural gas and oil, because we have the expertise. We have a independent, independent judiciary. We have a strong environmental lobby. We have a rule of law nation and we have an independent judiciary. Iran doesn't have that. Venezuela doesn't have that. Russia doesn't have it. And China doesn't have it. So uh, it doesn't make much sense. And they've, they've gotten themselves into a situation where they know they're looking at a, not a red wave, but a red tsunami come November, and they're trying to backtrack. I, I heard the same uh, term, red tsunami, from uh, Sid Miller last night, he had the Texas Agricultural Commissioner. Uh, Congressman, it's good to see you. We appreciate you taking the time on a Thursday. Thanks, Lynn. God yeah. bless you. Take Thank care. Thank you. All the best. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.